writing equations of lines parallel and perpendicular to a given line through a point. All right, so let's see what, what do they expect us to do here. So consider the line y equals negative 3x plus 5. And then part A says find the equation of the line that is perpendicular to this line and passes through the point negative 7, um, negative 6. Part B, find the equation of the line that is parallel to this line and passes through negative 7 and negative 6. So we get the same point here, but now we have to find a line that's perpendicular to this original line and one that's parallel to this original line. Um, so the first thing that we, of course, need to know is an equation for a line. So I'm going to write down y equals mx plus b. If you haven't um, watched any other videos or uh, gone through any of the other notes, um, I just want to cover a couple things here. So m is our slope, and b is our y-intercept. So that is why we creatively enough call this the slope-intercept form. Um, so this does make it a little easy to plug in. Um, let's see. Do they have to be in slope intercept form? I might argue a little bit with the directions here. It might force us to do slope intercept form because it might say y equals on the next page. So we'll stick with this. If it doesn't say y equals on the next page, I'll show you another method that may be a tiny bit easier. Um, not a tiny bit, it'll actually be quite a bit easier if we can do this other method. But for now, let's go ahead and go with slope intercept form since that's what they're showing us to do. Um, so in this one, if a line is perpendicular, To another line and the symbol for perpendicular by the way is just a an upside down T like this um, so perpendicular slope is the negative reciprocal reciprocal okay I think I smushed that together a little too much um, so slope is the negative reciprocal um, which sounds really funny, but what that means is if I have a slope of one third, then I make it negative three over one. I flip the, the fraction over and I flip the sign. So that's all negative reciprocal means. It means flip it over and flip the sign. If it's parallel, and that means like this, parallel. So parallel, then the slope is the same. So that means if it's one third, then a parallel line would also have a slope of one third. So we don't change anything about the slope. We need to know that because we, we're going to need to know what plug to plug in for slope. So now that we know if it's perpendicular, we have to flip the, the slope over whatever slope we were given and make it negative. If we want it to be parallel, we don't change the slope at all. All right, so now that we've done a little bit of note taking here, we need to start figuring. Um, some of the pieces out. I'm going to go to gray for whatever reason here. All right. So we need to know some of the pieces here. We know, and I'm going to put this here. I'll put it down here. I'm going to run out of room. But So I have negative 7 and negative 6. This is the point they gave us for both A and B, for both parts. Um, and then they also gave us the equation Let's see if I can fit in here. Y equals negative 3x plus 5. So they gave us the slope right here. Because remember, m, whatever's next to the x is m. That is our slope. So we know what slope it is. So we can flip it to be per perpendicular. We can keep it the same to be parallel. But what we need to do at this point is um, having it go through a different point means that it's going to change this b. So it's not going to have a plus 5 on the end. It's going to have a different number. We need to know what that number is. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug these numbers in. So I'm going to change these colors really quick. So if we have y, and this is y, because remember it always goes x then y, 
And if this is um, x, sorry, this is our x, so we have our x and our y. And I apologize if that's super duper bright, but um, just kind of makes it very easy to, to tell the difference there. So I'm going to plug this in. I'm going to have negative 6 equals, um, and I'm going to leave it, let's see, let's do perpendicular first. So if it's perpendicular, remember that means that if it's negative 3, 3 has a 1 under it. So that's going to become 1 third. I'm just flipping it over. It is negative already, so I'm going to make it positive. So that means that our slope is going to be positive 1 third. Okay, and then we're going to plug in negative 7. This means multiplication right here. We're multiplying by negative 7 plus 5. All right, so now we want to multiply. Oh, sorry, not plus 5. That was silly. Plus B. We need to figure out what B is. Plus 5 is what the original B is, but we need to know what the new one is for the perpendicular line. And then we're going to have to do this again. For the parallel line because we need to know what it is for parallel. Um, so we need to start multiplying. So we have negative 6 equals, remember fraction multiplication, you're just multiplying across the top and across the bottom. So I have 1 times negative 7 and 3 times 1 plus b. I want b all by itself. That's always our goal when we're solving an equation is to get the variable by itself. So that means I want to move this negative 3 sevenths to the other side. So I'm going to add, sorry, I said 3 sevenths, 7 thirds. So I'm going to add 7 thirds to both sides like this. And I know this was kind of scrunched together, but negative 7 thirds, positive 7 thirds, whenever I add and subtract the same number, it's 0, crosses out. So we just have to deal with this fraction here. I'm going to come up here because I, I don't have a whole lot of room down low. So I have ne negative 6 plus 7 thirds. And I want to add fractions. That we do need like denominators to add. Remember, this has a 1 under it. Every number has a 1 under it, just like this negative 3 when we were flipping the, um, the slope here. It had a 1 under it. Negative 6 also has a 1 under it. But I don't want it to be a 1 and a 3. I want it to be a 3 and another 3 because I can turn one into three by multiplying by three. If I multiply the bottom by three, I have to multiply the top by three. So instead of negative six, it's gonna say negative 18, because I changed the bottom from one, so now I have to change the top. All right, so now I can say negative 18 plus seven, and I get negative 11 over three. So B equals negative 11 over 3, which is by far a super ugly number, but that is, in fact, what they also get here. Um, so all we have to do is go back and plug this in because they want to actually see the equation. So we have Y equals 1 third X minus 11 thirds. So this is our equation that we would actually type in, just like they did on the bottom here. All right, so that was one of them. I know, this one's a little bit longer here. So I'm going to go and erase some things. Do, 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 do. I need to give myself some more room here. Mm. Okay. So now we're still using all the same pieces, but instead of perpendicular, we're going to do the parallel version. So remember, parallel means I don't change the slope at all. So if the slope is negative one, or sorry, negative three, then it's going to stay negative three. The only thing I have to do is plug in everything else, and remember, instead of plus five, it's going to be plus b. So I have negative six, because remember, that's my y, equals... Do, 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 do. Negative 3. That's going to stay negative 3 because this is parallel. And let's see. Times negative 7. And then I want to say plus B. So this one's going to be a little easier. There's not, not a whole lot of fractions going on here. So I'm going to leave this 
gray for now. So I have negative 6 equals negative 3 times negative 7. Two negatives and multiplication mean positive. So I just say 3 times 7 and I get 21 plus b. I still want to get b by itself just like I did last time. So I'm going to subtract 21 like that. So then I, woo, didn't mean to cross all that out. I'm going to go like that. So now I have negative 6 minus 21. And they're both negative, but I'm not multiplying. I need to um, add them and keep the negative sign. So I have negative 27. Sorry, I know it's crunching down here. So again, two negatives make a positive when you're multiplying or dividing. So this is going to equal. So I have 21 minus 21. Any number minus itself. So here's my b. So now all I have to do is go back and plug this in. I have y equals negative 3x minus 27. So the second one was quite a bit easier to, to figure out. We didn't have to deal with all that fraction stuff. Um, but either way, we are going to have to do a little bit of work for these. Not a lot, just a little bit. All right, so let's go ahead and erase this stuff. Um, all right, and I'm going to erase the perpendicular and parallel, so make sure you have it written down on your page because you should keep that as notes, but I just want to have a little bit more room on here to, to write. So normally, you wouldn't have to erase to have more room on your paper. You could just move over or get a new paper. Um, so remember, we're still trying to get it in the slope-intercept form. So this is our end goal. This is what we want to write for each one, but we need to find out what is our m and then what is our b, which is why we have to plug in y and x, because we need to figure out what is b going to change to. Remember, b is the y-intercept. That's just, if I'm looking at a graph, here's my y, here's my x, so this is my y-axis and my x-axis. Y-intercept is simply, if I have a line, where does it cross the y-line? And the reason that matters for an equation is that's usually a starting point for quite a lot of different types of real world real world equations. So a lot of the time the y-intercept is where do you start? So if you have a certain fee no matter what, so if you go to the, the bookstore and you want to rent some books, but just to have the account it costs you $30, well $30 is your starting point. And then depending on how many books you rent will um, have your cost go up or something along those lines. I don't know of any libraries that actually charge you to have a membership, but hey, maybe. That was just my example for some reason. All right, so let's go ahead and start writing this out. So we have x minus 4y equals negative 1. So they did something that was a little bit meaner here because they're, they're not giving it to us to us that looks like this. They're not giving it y equals mx plus b. We need to make it look like y equals mx plus, plus b so we know what our slope is. Because um, right now we don't know what the slope is. We don't even know what, what to do for perpendicular. We don't know what to flip over and make negative or positive. We don't know what to make keep the same for parallel. So we need to know the slope. Um, so we want to try to get y all by its lonesome. So we need to start moving everything away from y. So we're going to start with subtracting x. Um, remember, we always look in front, not behind, for if it's positive or negative. So there's nothing here which makes it positive. Um, it just kind of defaults. So then we're going to move this to the other side like this. x minus x, even though we don't know what the amount is, it's still the same number, so it becomes 0. And we have negative 4y equals negative x minus 1. The reason I put x first is because x comes first in the equation here. So I'm just trying to make it match. All right, our last step to get y by itself is to move this negative 4. And um, to move it, sorry, I didn't say that either. The reason we're subtracting is because this is addition and we want to undo the addition. To undo addition, we subtract. If I subtract from the left side of the equation, which by side I'm talking about the equal sign, I have to subtract from the right side. So to undo multiplication, which is what negative 4y means, I have to divide. If I divide from the left side of the equation, I have to divide the right side of the equation like this. Negative 4 divided by negative 4 becomes 1, and I have y equals, and now this looks a little bit more complicated than it needs to. Um, remember, this is a negative 1. We just don't tend to write the 1 there because 
Um, it's we don't need it most of the time. In this case, it'll be nice um, because we can write this as negative one over negative four x. So I can just write x off to the side, and then I can do the same thing with this negative one, negative one and negative four. Um, so what happens with two negatives when you're dividing? They become positive, right? So what that really means is that it's one fourth x plus one fourth. All right, so we have our equation, um, and this is our slope. This is what we are either going to have to flip over or keep the same. So for our perpendicular line, m is going to be, we're going to take the one fourth and we're going to flip it over. So we're going to have four over one. We're going to make it negative. Now, four over one really just means negative four, like this. And it doesn't matter that the negative is here. So I can put the negative on top, I can put it in the middle, I can put it on the bottom. That is not a big deal. Um, we just give the negative to whichever one, um, as long as there's only one negative. So I'm just going to, since I'm getting rid of the one, I'm giving it to the four here. So for our parallel line, slope is still going to be the exact same. Nothing's going to change. Oops, sorry. Or the same one um, that we just figured out. So it's going to stay one fourth. All right. So now that we have that part figured out, um, and I'm going to rewrite the equation up here just so that I can erase for space purposes. So this is the equation we just figured out right here. I just kind of rewrote it a little neater there. So I'm going to erase because I need space. All right. So now we're going to start plugging things in. and. We have a point that they gave us. So remember, and I'm going to change this so this is red because our y, I kept doing red for, for y on the other page. So we have negative 4, and then let's go ahead and do orange because that's a little nicer to look at, I think, than green. So orange is going to be our x. Um, so then that's negative 2. And then our slope is m, which remember, that is our one-fourth here, or our negative four here. So we have all of our pieces, we just need to start plugging them in. So let's start with our y. So we have negative four equals negative four. Boys, please go. No, please go. All right. Negative four for our slope times negative two for our x coordinate. And sorry, I didn't say I'm doing perpendicular first because it was the one that I wrote first up here. So I went ahead and, and went with the perpendicular slope. And then we have plus b. Remember, we're not going to say plus 1 fourth. That's the starting point for this line. We need to figure out what is the starting point for our new perpendicular line. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start working out the math. So we have negative 4 equals negative 4 times negative 2. Two negatives in multiplication mean positive. 4 times 2 gets me 8 plus b. I still want to get b by itself. So I'm going to undo the addition here. Remember, I'm not looking behind. I'm actually looking in front. So I want to go minus 8. So I have negative 4 minus 8. This is not two negatives make a positive. I'm not multiplying these. I'm subtracting this. So negative 4 minus 8 gives me negative 12 because I add and keep the negative sign. Equals 8 minus 8. So crosses out. We can actually hear that one a little easier, 8 minus 8. Um, but whenever we have a positive and a negative of the same number, they cancel. And then we just bring b down. All right, so we have our first bit here. So this is, um, we know what our b is and we know what our m is. So we just fill this in. We have y equals, and I'm going to put it in pink here. So we have negative 4. Uh, I'm going to go back to x. Sorry, just trying to color code here. 
minus 12. And I didn't do a different color for that one for whatever reason. So when I was working that out, it just was gray. So we have y equals negative 4 x, because we still use the negative 4 that we know the slope is, x minus 12. All right? So that's going to be our first equation we type in here. y equals negative 4 x minus 12. All right, so here's our first equation. The second equation um, is parallel line. So we want to plug in these same numbers. So we're still going to have, and I'm going to move this over here real quick. All right, so we're still going to have negative 4 equals, this time our slope isn't going to be negative 4. We're doing the parallel line. So remember, it's 1 fourth. And then we're going to go times negative 2 plus b. All right. So we're going to multiply straight across. Remember, there's a 1 under here. So I'm going to have negative 4 on this side. And then I'm going to go 1 times negative 2. I'm going to get negative 2. 4 times 1, I'm going to get 4 plus b. Again, we want to get this b all by itself. So this is a negative 2 fourths. So to undo a negative, I have to do a positive on both sides here. Um, so remember, negative number, positive number, as long as they're the exact same, I can cancel them out. So what we need to do is deal with this fraction here. So we have negative 4 plus 2 fourths. It's a little easier to write this way. Remember, there's a 1 under here. I don't want it to be a 1. I want it to become a 4. In order to make a 1 a 4, I have to multiply by. 4. Remember to do the same thing to the top. So I need it multiplied by 4, so I'm going to get negative 16. So negative 16 plus 2 is negative 14 because they're opposites, so I actually subtract, and then 4 stays on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is reduce because I, I don't want to leave it negative 14 over 4. I know that they can both divide by 2 here. Um, so this equals negative 7 and 2. Sorry, this little toolbar is kind of getting in my way here. So the only thing I haven't brought down yet is the B. So this equals B. So now we know what our B is. Whoops, didn't mean to grab the side of the frame there. So we know what our B is, and we know what our slope is. So we can go Y equals 1 fourth x minus 7 halves. So let's go ahead and go y equals 1 fourth x minus 7 halves. Whoops, that was funky. I forgot to hit my space bar to make sure that my x came out over to the side here. So that's what happens if you forget to move your fraction bar. So if I start typing here, it just keeps going on the fraction. I have to make sure that I leave the fraction before I continue typing. All right, check. Yay. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and try something a little different on the next one. Um, because I'm hoping that it will let us use a different formula here. We'll try it. If we get it wrong, we get it wrong. Um, but I'm thinking it will let us use a completely different try or a completely different formula. Um, and the other one is called point slope. Um, so because it doesn't say y equals, it's letting me type in my equation. It should let me use point slope formula. So that is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. It looks a little more complicated than this other one, but really. If we know our point, which they're giving us our point, so they're telling us our point is 3 8. Um, just keep in mind, and I'm going to make this a red 8, and then we, so this is x, so this would go here. And you know what? I'm going to change my color here so that it matches because we had this one red for y. So I'm going to make my y red, and then my x was orange. So I'm going to kind of match my colors there and make sure I'm not mixing up my colors too much. And then the other thing was slope, which I had in pink, which 
All we, we might have to do is manipulate the formula depending on if they give it the, the original equation to us, or it'll just kind of pop out and be given to us. So that's kind of nice. So we have y equals 8 fifths x minus 5. And this is already written in slope intercept. So I already know here's my slope because it's next to the x. It's always next to the x. As long as this says y equals, then it should work out that way where it's right next to the x. And it doesn't even have to be written in this format. I could go like this, plus 8 fifths, darn it, that was a really ugly fifth, but 8 fifths x like this. And this is written out of order, but all I do is look for the x and go, oh, look, there's my slope. So it doesn't change anything. It doesn't matter how it's written as long as it says y equals. All right. So we already know our slope and we know our point. So this is my, my pink number, right? Now remember if it's, if it's perpendicular for slope, that means that I'm gonna take the number, I'm gonna move my arrow there. So I'm gonna take the 8 fifths, I'm gonna flip it over. And then if it's positive, I'm gonna make it negative. Now if it's a parallel line, my slope is gonna stay exactly the way it already is. So it's gonna stay 8 fifths. All right, and then the equation they give me, or the equation, sorry, the point they give me, which we already wrote in here, was eight and three. So let's see if they will let us write it this way. So we have y minus equals x minus, so I'm just kind of writing my template there so that I can just fill in the pieces. So these are the pieces that never change in this formula. Um, not for this part anyway. Um, so these may change later if, if they had given us something to plug in, but for now, when you're creating the formula, these don't change. Y minus equals X minus and parentheses. So there's three pieces in here that are missing. We need to fill them in. So Y minus Y1, which we know this is our Y and this is our X. So this is going to be three. And then our slope, because that's m is next. So for perpendicular, we have negative 5 eighths. And then we're going to go negative, oops, sorry, grabbed the wrong color. So we're gonna go x minus eight. And I just wrote the equation, that's done. I don't, I shouldn't have to do any more from that. So make sure I did perpendicular first, so make sure you are typing it in the correct spot. Equals negative five divided by eight. And x minus 8. So we should be okay writing it this way as long as I wrote everything incorrectly. All right, let's go ahead and get our parallel one. So I'm going to do that same thing. I have y minus equals x minus x, or parentheses. All right, so we're still going to have 3. The point hasn't changed. Um, the only thing that's going to change in this one is the slope. The slope is going to be 8 fifths. So our point for x is still going to be 8. All right, so I wonder, can I be a little bit lazy here and copy and paste? Oh, look at that. So what I did, I highlighted the whole thing, and then I hit um, Command or Control C, and what that does is it copies it, and then I clicked over here and I, I hit Command V, and it pastes it in there so I can be a tiny bit lazy there and not have to retype it. So I'm going to go 8 fifths. I just have to change that fraction to make sure that it matches because um, I, I have to flip that back over. All right, let's see if it lets us do it this way. <gasps> it lets us do it this way. And I think this way is much easier for what they're giving us um, because we can very easily put this into the equation. All right, so we're going to go ahead and keep doing it this way for now. Oh, where'd my eraser go? Oh, I had moved it over here. All right, so I'm going to just erase a few things here. See if I can do this without erasing too much. Do, do, do. E, e. Okay. Um, all right, I'm gonna need to rewrite that equation because we don't know what they're giving us. And then we'll need new coordinates here. Okay, let's see if we can do this last one here. Okay, so they're giving us an equation of Clicked on the wrong tool there. All right, so the equation is y equals negative six 
x plus 1. There's our slope. It says y equals. So I know we're good to start using this for the, the slope. So if it's a perpendicular slope, then negative 6. Remember, there's a 1 under it. It becomes 1 over 6, and it becomes a positive. If it's the parallel slope, then it's just going to stay negative 6. So, um, and I can even start putting this in my equation here. I already have it written out for my template. I know that it comes right after, sorry, this one, right after the equal sign. So I'm going to put 1, 6 then, and I'm going to put negative 6. So I already filled in my slopes for both equations. All right, so let's go ahead and write in the coordinates. So they want 5 and 5. Oops, clicked on the wrong color there. 5. So we have 5 and 5. So we just make sure for x, since I already have orange highlighted, I'm going to put x in first. So it's going to be the same thing for both. And since they're positive, it can't change its negative. It's going to be minus 5, minus 5. And then for y, we have 5. So again, it's, it's going to be minus 5, minus 5. The only time this changes is if this is a negative sign. So if it, if it was a negative 5, then we'd have y minus negative 5. Well, two negatives there, because I can hear minus negative, would change the sign. But because it's not negative, it, they're positives, it's not going to change the sign at all. All right, so parallel line first equals negative 6 is x minus 5. y minus 5 equals negative 6, x minus 5. Perfect. Okay, and then I highlighted, I copied, and I'm pasting. You can also do like a left click for copy and a left click for paste. That should also work just fine. So we end up with 1, 6. Check. Yay! Though that's definitely an easier method, I think, than trying to convert it into a slope-intercept form. Um, so it just makes it much easier that they are allowing us to do this and just plug in the pieces that we have. All right, we're all done. Yay!